Good morning. This is April 22nd, 2013. My name is Chip Taylor and this is what I call Church Without Walls. And the daily reading for today is from the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 1 through 18. And starting with verse 1. Duh. Verse 1. Now the apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles too had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of the uncircumcised and ate with them. Peter began to explain it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when in a trance I had a vision something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, reptiles, the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. But I said, Certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth but a second time the voice from heaven answered what God has made clean you are not to call profane this happened three times and then everything was drawn up into the sky again just then three men appeared at the house where we were so who had uh, just then three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. The, these six brothers also went with me and entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing outside his house saying, Send someone to Joppa to summon Simon, who is called Peter who will speak words to you by which you and your whole household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will, bapt you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us when we became believers, in the Lord Jesus Christ who was I to able who was I to be able to hinder God when they heard this they stopped objecting and glorified God saying God has granted life giving repentance to the Gentiles too all right so what happened is Peter went down to back up to Jerusalem actually after spending time with the Gentiles and evidently he had been seen or it was told that he had spent time with um, Gentiles who had then become believers. Believers before he spent time with them or believers after he spent time with them. But he spent time with these Gentiles and ate with them. Alright, what they're talking about is the kosher laws that um, Peter was spending time with people who were not following the law. Christians, but weren't following the law. Maybe they had not even been circumcised. And what, what Peter's saying is not about the law. It's about the spirit. And he explained it to them. Now, the thing that I like that is that Peter explained it to him step by step started at the beginning he didn't cop an attitude he didn't say how dare you accuse me don't you know who I am he didn't say anything like that he addressed their concerns and explained the theology the things that he understood about the vision that he had, had and the way that God was working not only in their lives but in the lives of others around them alright so he had a vision and he had a vision about these food laws, these kosher laws. And basically anything that God created for us on this earth was no longer forbidden as far as food was concerned. 
again, it's more about the spirit than it is about the law. It's not as though we have dominion over the beast to the point where we can go and kill anything we want and leave it laying on the ground. All of the things that are put on this planet, if they are of use to us, they are not to be abused by us. Um, it's a gift and created by God, one that should be honored. Um, okay. Alright, also, he said what God had made clean, we were not to call profane. Now, when we become believers, we get a new spirit, a new soul. We're cleansed. It's as though we never sinned. So, not only are we not supposed to call another believer of some profane name, we're not supposed to um, bring up the past of some believer who's now turned themselves around, or even the present of some believer who's maybe not walking as close to Christ in the same way that you are. Okay. You're not supposed to look down upon them, have judgment on them, as far as calling them clean or unclean, as far as calling them good Christians or bad Christians. That's up to God. But also, with us, when we fall short of the glory of God, we're not supposed to kick our own butts. We're not supposed to call ourselves stupid or losers or weak or any of these negative comments that we put on ourselves you know the, the person who kicks my butt the most is me and what I see is that what God has called clean we're not supposed to call anything but clean alright the spirit told Peter not to discriminate against these other these other brothers we're not supposed to discriminate against anybody who's a believer even non-believers I'm not sure that we're supposed to discriminate because if I am looking down my nose in judgment of a non-believer that is hardly attractive to that non-believer in order to want to then come and be a Christian if I'm sitting in judgment of somebody who may be doing something that maybe they don't even feel right about it, the last thing I need to do is kick their butt. They're probably doing a pretty good job of their own. All I do is talk about what's wrong with me and how God loves me anyway. Alright. Also, the Holy Spirit fell upon these um, Gentiles when Peter was talking to them the same way that the Holy Spirit had fallen upon the original apostles in the upper room during Pentecost. Okay. You can be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit um, and you're going to go to heaven. You've, you've got your salvation. But from what I understand in my own personal life, there is an anointing of the Holy Spirit, a baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is above and beyond just becoming saved. Um, sometimes it comes at the same time when somebody is saved. Sometimes it comes gradually. Um, this is where the gifts of the Holy Spirit come in. The gifts of prophecy, the gifts of driving out demons, uh, the gifts of healing, of teaching, of different things like that. Alright, and then God gave repentance to these people who were violating the kosher laws. God gave repentance to those who were violating the kosher laws. These Gentiles who were, who were not following the law were still saved. God gave them repentance. Isn't that interesting? that God gave repentance to sinners. You didn't have to be good and then God gives you mercy and grace. No. He gave mercy and grace to people who 
still doing their thing. Maybe not as bad as they used to be, but not following the letter of the law. Following the law most of the time? Mm, let's hope so. But not, not its strict adherence to the law. It's about the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law. That's what Christ is trying to say. He didn't do away with any of the law. But it's not about the law as much as it is about the spirit of the law. What's behind it? What's behind your... What are your motives? And what's behind your actions? And hopefully as we walk with Christ, our connection grows. And our adherence to the law improves. Alright. This has been... Church Without Walls. My name is Chip Taylor. I hope you have a blessed day and tell your friends.